Hello friends, this is the sixth lecture on PT Tutorial. So the topic will be PT Tutorial in Sudan Lamas and we will be discussing about the Endocrine Society guidelines. My name is Dr. Santosh Abraham. I am a specialist registrar in diabetes and endocrinology at Scarborough General Hospital. So definition, a pituitary insuloma is a previously unsuspected pituitary lesion. So it is discovered on an imaging study. So that is done for an unrelated reason. So this is very important. So a lesion of the pituitary that is discovered by, that is picked up by an imaging study, done for an unrelated reason. So it is not done for a symptom that is specifically related to the pituitary lesion such as visual loss or hyperpituitarism or hormone excess but rather for evaluation of symptoms like headache or CNS complaints or neck or uh, head and neck or neurological complaints or head trauma. So micro incident lomas are less than one centimeter and macro incident lomas are less are more than one centimeter. So these are uh, images of incident lomas. I think they're not very clear, but uh, as shown by the arrows, you could see that was uh, uh, it was just captured on the MRI. So etiology: the true di pathological uh, diagnosis of most are unknown. So. Uh, in a, in a series of cell masses that required uh, surgical intervention, 91% were adenomas and about 9% were, the rest uh, remaining were of non pituitary origin. So most of them were craniopharyngiomas and earth case clefts. So 91% of these incident lomas are adenomas. So cystic lesions are most likely to be rat cases. They are also present incidentally or uh, the incident loma can also be a craniopharyngioma uh, which is non-cystic and uh, the crani craniopharyngioma can also present a cystic lesion whereas non-cystic are mostly adenomas so immunohistochemical analysis shows uh, it is negative in 50 percent I mean they don't stain in 50 percent and uh, you screen for hypersecretion because you don't know whether this adenoma is hormonally active or not so there has been uh, an incidence of uh, as high as one in uh, thousand in a Belgian study so um, whereas uh, in a region of uh, UK it was uh, very low and also in Finland. So uh, evaluation of hypersecretion should uh, be undertaken for hormones like prolactin, GH, ACTH. So uh, for more large macro lomas, uh, the prolactin level should be measured in diluted serum so as to overcome the hook effect which I've already uh, told you in my lecture in acromegaly so they could receive if the tumor is found to uh, secrete prolactin so if there is hyperprolactinemia we could give a trial of dopamine agonist therapy and mild to moderate elevations may be due to stock compression effect of the lesion other than prolactinoma. So when you give a dopamine agonist uh, trial, uh, you might shrink the hyperprolactinemia. But if it is due to a stock compression, the tumor sh shrinkage is unlikely. So you need to follow up with repeat imaging. But if, it, if the tumor secretes GH, the treatment is surgery. So GH secreting microadenomas can be su uh, cured surgically in almost all the cases. And screening for the GH secreting tumor by measuring of an IGF-1 level so is 
warranted here if so it's elevated you have to look for uh, GH suppression test so if there is a clinical suspicion of glucocorticoid excess lab screening is uh, suggested even subclinical hypocortisolism should be followed up for uh, a possible Cushing's disease so uh, the society does not recommend routine measurements of plasma ACTH levels with incident lomas. So uh, screen, uh, screening for certain hormone secretion syndromes were considered important even if the patient was asymptomatic. And also screening for hyperprolactinemia was also considered is also considered essential because uh, with oral dopamine agonist therapy there is a potential to treat it. So there is a potential for successful treatment. And uh, why do you want to do the serum IGF level? Because you could uh, detect a GH secreted tumor very early, so which could be asymptomatic even in the, from the start. So thus it could reduce the long term morbidity and increase the likelihood of surgical cure. So some also uh, consider screening for glucocorticoid excess as well in all patients. But others, other uh, doctors may limit it to patients who have a uh, high index of cli uh, uh, clinical suspicion. Some of them uh, in the task force uh, recommended measurement of free T4 morning cortisol and testosterone levels, whereas other recommended that it should also include TSH, LH, FSH and IGF-1. So in up to 30% of patients there were deficits of gonadotrophins and uh, the ACTH cortisol axis was affected in 18% and the thyroid axis in 28%. So mostly the gonadotrophin axis was uh, affected in 30% and the second one was 28% uh, thyroid axis which was almost nearly as affected as the gonadotropin. So this is the uh, you know flow chart for evaluation and treatment of an uh, incident loma. So evaluate whether it is hyperfunctioning or non-functioning. So if it is hyperfunctioning, check whether it is se secreting prolactinoma. So you give the dopamine agonist. If others, you give the surgery or medical therapy. And if it is clinically non-functioning, assess the size. If it is micro incident loma, repeat MRI uh, for any increased growth in tumor. And if the gro uh, tumor is growing more and becomes symptomatic, do the surgery. For macro, uh, you do the VF testing. So if it is abnormal, go for surgery. It means that it could be the tumor could be abetting the optic chiasm. But uh, for macro, if the VF testing is okay, check evaluate hyperpituitarism. If it is normal, repeat MRI and pituitary functions and visual function, uh, visual field testing. So if there is a visual field abnormality again, or if in, uh, there is growth again uh, you consider for surgery so in a micro incident loma you repeat the MRI in one year uh, yearly for three years and then less frequently but in a macro incident loma repeat the MRI in six months after the detection and then yearly for three years and then less frequently so the difference between these two screening is that here you start with annual uh, MRI in uh, once in uh, up to three years and then discontinue here uh, after the first MRI uh, sorry first MRI you do the second MRI in six months and then you do it annually for three years so initial evaluation for a patient with incident loma so you should take a complete history and physical examination so for hypopituitarism as well as uh, hope, uh, hyper secretion of any hormone so if there is evidence uh, clinical evidence of these conditions and uh, appropriate biochemical evaluation should be done so in all patients with incident loma including those without symptoms uh, they undergo clinical and laboratory uh, evaluations for hormone hyper secretion as well as evaluating for hypopituitarism also so this is very important, not only for increased hormones, but also for hyperpituitarism. you should evaluate.
so patients presenting with uh, insulinomas which abut the optic nerves or chiasm on MRI we should undergo a formal VF exam so all patients also should have an MRI exam uh, you know, to evaluate the insulinoma if it was first uh, you know uh, picked up by the CT so this is to delineate the nature and extent of the lesion and as I've told you before those who do not uh, this, this is the follow-up testing for the pituitary insulinoma those who do not meet the criteria for surgery should receive non-surgical follow-up so MRI in six months after the initial scan in a macro insulinoma and then for three years uh, and one year after the initial scan for a micro insulinoma then continue up to three years annually so if there is no change in size every year for macro uh, you do the MRI and every one to two years or every uh, every year you can do for micro also for following three years and then gradually you know tape uh, uh, do it less frequently if the insulinoma enlarges to about a com about or compress the optic nerves or okay, chiasm do VF testing so uh, you also need to evaluate for hypopituitarism six months after the initial testing in uh, macro insulinomas okay and um, also then uh, it should be continued each EF that is every year you should look for hypopituitarism so after the first diagnosis you should repeat the test for hypotetorism in six months and then annually in macro insulinoma uh, because it could develop when the size of the insulinoma increases you don't need to test for hypopituitarism in patients with micro insulinomas where uh, the clinical picture history everything is stable and the MRI also that do not change over time but for macro insulinomas you need to do the annual uh, uh, the evaluation for hypopituitarism because it could occur in macro insulinomas. So, what are the indications for surgery? A VF deficit due to the lesion, other visual abnormalities like ophthalmoplegia or neurological symptoms due to compression, uh, a lesion abutting or compressing the optic nerves or chiasm on MRI, apoplexy with the visual disturbance and hypersecretic tumors except prolactoma so VF deficits lesion abutting or compressing the chiasm on MRI apoplexy uh, visual abnormalities visual ap sorry visual abnormalities and like ophthalmoplegia neurological compromise then also hypersecreting tumors except the prolactomas so surgery should be considered for patients if they have the following clinically significant growth loss of endocrinological function and you know the lesion is close to the opti optic chiasm and plan in to become the pregnant so it should be the former indications were to do were where you de will definitely do the surgery that is in VF deficit vi visual abnormalities abutting or compressing the optic chiasm, apoplexy and hypersecreting tumors but in the following cases you can consider surgery so if there is significant growth if there is a loss of uh, endocrinological function like uh, you know uh, hypopituitarism due to uh, the tumor as such or if there is uh, the lesion is close to the optic chiasm and the patient plans to become pregnant or if there is unremitting headache you can consider surgery So it is. Uh, uh, it is from the uh, an RCP journal, I guess. So it, the, if you have a pituitary incident loma, it's it is how they advocate. Like it's a micro lesion, less than uh, ten millimeter, one centimeter, and the macro is more than one. So in investigate for pituitary hyperfunction in both, but if in the macro they adv advise hyperfunction, uh, and also visual abnormalities because the lesion is more here. So endocrine or visual abnormalities treat no abnormalities close observation. Here in the micro lesion, if it is hyperfunctioning, treat according to the hormone subtype, and if it is non-functioning, limit observation. 
so uh, I'm sorry it was not from the RCP I think it was from the European Society Endocrinology uh, Journal I'm not very sure about that anyway it it is a uh, quite easier flow chart you know you divide according to the size and then you look for the pituitary hype function so if you don't remember at least the former chart you can always remember at least this one so what are the advantages the cranial MRI in, has led to increased detection of insulinomas in up to 20 percent of patients so most insulinomas are small benign pituitary adenoma so I told you about 90 percent could be functioning or non-functioning and serum prolactin is the most important test because it's curative so you need to first check the prolactin if the prolactin is more it will go for the medical therapy so macro insulinomas are four times more likely than our micro adenomas to increase in size with time so that's why it's more important to follow them up so uh, according to them pituitary macro insulinomas should be uh, closely uh, followed up even if it is non-functioning so they are advising annual MRI for at least five years with endocrine ophthalmological and MRI so this is different from the American guidelines uh, so they are advising at least for five years and then less frequently